you know, the tools are enabling that. Um, and I think we're gonna continue to see the stuff that's gonna be really popular or the stuff that's gonna bring their fan bases and audiences into the creation process and tools that are going to, I think, really, you know, um, do really well are gonna be the ones that enable that. And stuff like Mid Journey uh, is probably the great top generative AI image, um, image tool out there. They're doing stuff like generating rooms uh, or creating, you know, products like rooms, which is you can go in and now create and build entire, you know, uh, photographs, images uh, with friends in the same style. Um, and that's only going to happen, I think, increasingly so. Um, in addition to that, you know, other, and, and to, to Bill's point about education, is that we're seeing how information is being spread and shared is changing rapidly. Um, if you want to be at the cutting edge of AI, there's not a whole lot of people who are teaching this stuff. I think that there's foundational skills um, in data science, in mathematics, um, that can help you get there from a machine learning and a research perspective. But from like a consumer perspective, and a builder and an entrepreneur is like the most of the stuff that's happening is on the internet in really obscure pockets like Discord, where a ton of information is being shared by people who are, you know, you know, 45 year old nerds in their mom's basement in Germany or Japan or something that are making very strange things, but they're discovering workflows that are probably some of the most advanced in the world and they're sharing that with their friends. Um, so it's, you know, aside from kind of thinking about when you build a business or a media IP, how can you do that collectively and share in the process and making it publicly, you know, happen publicly, um, I think that that's going to help build your audience, but also your consumers and generate something, you know, we don't know what that's going to look like, but bigger. And then also, how do you find where the information is flowing and that happens, you know, on YouTube, on Discord, on Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok, and it's being able to discern the signal from the noise in those places too. So it's, there's market research. Yes. Yeah, and so we've got so we've got tools um, to enable traditional and non-traditional media. We've got um, users, the end user, becoming a participant in the creation of an actual piece of property or 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 at least an immersive experience, right? Yeah, the trends are pointing that way. And in fact, really, the process of building is almost the product right. itself. So. And that obviously brings us to the educational part, right? And so we, you know, with Bill, um, I guess I, my question to you is, how does that all work, right? So we've got this new technology, and it's kind of a free for all right now, right? Right. So Absolutely. how do we focus it? What are we What are we looking at? So I think so. You know, to your point, I think you're absolutely right that there aren't a lot of AI educators out there right now. And this is actually a really critical need, in, in my opinion. Uh, the way that we're going to move forward, uh, both in terms of, of uh, national security and in terms of jobs and having people prepared for the careers of the 21st century, is by, broadly speaking, having AI literacy being something that everybody is up to speed on. And the interesting thing is, I think that, in a sense, AI is creating this problem, but it may also help solve this problem, because we're now at the point where we can use AI technology to build tools for learning that make learners better, better, uh, better students and teachers better instructors. And so by building some of these tools, and we've started doing this at, at USC, but there are a lot of other places that are doing it as well. I think we will start to reach a tipping point where more, much more broadly, we can make education uh, about AI. I'm not talking about <laughs> making everybody a Python programmer. I'm talking really about, about giving them a general idea of what AI is, what it's about, what it can do, what it, what it can't do. And as a result, I think we will be a lot better uh, as a society, as consumers of AI technology, 
And also, you know, as consumers of the media, when stories come out that say, you know, AI is going to throw us all out of work, we can say, you know, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, that's not going to happen because right. the history of automation is that um, it doesn't actually decrease the number of jobs that are available. It does change the number of jobs and it changes the skill sets that are required for those jobs, which is again why this um, basic AI literacy I think is so critical. Well, you know, you're, you're leading me to the place uh, I was going, actually. So, you know, in the um, in recent memory, we've had a number of strikes with the guilds, as I think pretty much everybody is aware. And one of the big issues is, um, you know, creatives are very worried about whether they're going to lose their jobs. Is AI going to replace people in the bluntest terms, right? And maybe more specifically, how are our creatives who are in traditional media going to maintain what I think we're now calling the three C's, right? Um, and that's uh, control, right? Credit and compensation. And so with the world changing and people getting more educated with AI, you know, I'd like to ask each of you, how do you see um, humankind fitting in with the creative process and interfacing with AI, and how do you see that affecting essentially the job market? We'll start with Rachel. Yeah, um, I don't know if we have the chart queued up. If not, that's okay. No? Okay, that's fine. Um, but I think to start with, um, to your point about education, Bill, I think it's so important as a starting point to, as we think about what it means to upskill to be ready for where AI is going in these contexts to understand, you know, just enough technical understanding to see what the distinctions and types of and categories of AI are, right? So when you think about like generative AI, for instance, AI is like this huge bucket within it, you have machine learning, within it you have that you have deep learning, and generative AI is kind of arising out of, of 